everybody on Zoom. Um, today we have a, a fabulous artist and my friend, Tere from Mexico City. It was great seeing her just a couple of weeks ago and uh, visiting her beautiful country and beautiful city. So um, Terry Lajero is a brand ambassador from Mexico City. And today we get to, to see her and watch her beautiful artwork. Um, hello, Terry. You're, you're muted. Terry, you're muted. Sorry. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. So hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to be here with you. Sorry, I have to. OK. Uh, it is really, really nice to be here with you, with all of you. I think that we, ha we will have a great time working together. Thank you for, for this invitation again. It's a pleasure. I thought we're going to see um, some slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're ready for that. Let me just do the share screen. Okay. So here at live sessions, we want our community to connect with each other, especially with artists who, well, I think all of them will have inspired or will surely today will be inspired by Terry. Terry has or is in Instagram. This is her handle, her name. And she's also on Facebook. And um, Terry would always want to share artworks during live sessions. So the next couple of slides will be your artworks and we want to hear a line or two for each of these artworks here. We want to start with this piece. Okay. <clears throat> I think you're on mute, Terry. <laughs> Again? Again? Sorry. Sorry. Because I am hearing an echo and I don't know how to, to, to uh, do this. Can you, can you okay. hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Can you yeah. hear me? Okay. So uh, I would like to talk a little bit about this, uh, this uh, slides that Ethel is uh, passing here. Uh, the first thing I have to say is that I really love landscape. I I fall in love with scenes, daily scenes in the world, uh, in my country, in everywhere I I am, because I like to see how na nature and people uh, join together and give us the possibility of uh, seeing the magnificence of these scenes that I. I humbly want to catch, capture. So here, the this one, this one in here is in El Guincho in Portugal. I don't know if you have passed more, Ethel. You have more, or if I yes, can show some of my works to to the people in here. Um, I think that would be best as well because I think we have five five artworks in front of you, so we can just proceed with the actual artworks uh -huh. now. Okay, I'll do a stop share. So, and then I'll I'll add in the other camera. Here we go. It's there now. Okay. And well, you have seen those works. The the there are bigger size, but here I want to show you some smaller sizes because I like to work in situ and sometimes uh, to make some sketches. I would like to show you these paintings that I have made. Uh, this one, the first one, is a Mexican market in Oaxaca. And the second one, jo Janmin knows it because the, the bigger size uh, was exposed in his event uh, in the last months, is the, the church of Tonantzintla in Mexico. This was the sketch. These are sketches. And this one is the lake of Xochimilco in Mexico. I started always my work with the sketches and these sketches but can be watercolor or can be just uh, ink or pencil or, or walnut ink. I really love to work with walnut ink. And in these sketches, I also like to, to capture light. Sometimes I work uh, in blue 
only in blue because I, I like to, to see the first impression of light. Uh, let me see how it looks like here. This is Isamal in Merida. And I choose this work, uh, to, to, I choose to show you this work in the end because precisely I'm going to work uh, blue watercolor. I will use for this just the cobalt blue. This is the cobalt blue. I have it here. And here is in my palette. Okay, so we are going to make a, a street, a street in the city of Guanajuato in Mexico. And Mexico is divided by 32 states. And almost all my, my works are devoted to all the cities and plazas and all the things that I can find in these 32 escapes. Of course, when I am traveling, I like to capture all the essence of uh, the places that I visit. Uh, and some of you have been working with me even together and uh, making some plein air. So this is going to be what we are going to paint today. And we are going to use only the cobalt blue. For this, which blue? I am going to wet my paper because we don't have much time. And I will use uh, after the first stage the, the dryer, the hair dryer. I usually don't use the hair dryer. I prefer to, to get the, the painting uh, dry just naturally. And while the painting is drying, I like to work on another, another watercolor. So let's start here. And I will apply just uh, a wash with a cobalt blue in the whole paper. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. In this Charlotte. stage, while the paper is completely wet, I like to, to move the, the board to make the pigment go everywhere. Tara. Hi, Tere, this is Rajat here from India. I just yes. wanted to say one thing, uh, like monochrome is even more tougher than a multicolor painting, isn't it? Mm, no, I don't think so. Okay, because, because I find that when you are working in mono, monochromatic uh, right. paintings using just yeah. one color, you can yeah. work on the values. And working on the values and the shapes will mm -hmm. give you easier uh, the light. You will find the light the, in, a, in an easiest way with these uh, monochromatic works. Because I find that when you start to use color uh, mm -hmm. without studying the light, it will be more difficult because you have to struggle not only with the colors, but with the lights and the volumes. I agree with you. Right. Thank you. Tara? Yeah? Uh, what paper are you using today? What, what? What paper? Ah, I am using Clairefontaine, 300 gram, uh, uh, rough grain, torchon grain, okay? Have you deliberately chose that or is it just what you wanted to pick up and use? Um, I'm not sure if I understand you completely. Is it a deliberate choice for the painting that you're doing? I don't understand. Angela, can you help me? Una elección deliberada. Um, there are some papers that, that I like the most. Uh, Saunders Waterford, Claire Fontaine, Hanne Mule. So I try to, to work on these papers, but right now I haven't uh, Hanne Mule 
or uh, the other one that I told you, Sanders Waterford. I couldn't get them. So I use the paper I have at home. Right, thank you. Tere, se oye un poquito el eco. Sí, lo sé. Eh, el sistema sería apagar el altavoz de, del móvil. Del móvil. Espérame. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. I, no, no, I get no. out of the reunion. We just had to. Just I have had to that start again. To reconnect. Sorry for the inconveniences. You can tell us some things about Mexico, for example, in the meantime. Yeah. Mexico, did you know that Mexico has, I think Teddy will correct me, but it has at least two watercolor museums, which yeah. is thing in every country. And you have, are they all in Mexico City? I think they are both. Wait, wait, I will, I will talk about that, but I want to. Maybe we can put Angela in the hot seat. <laughs> Angela, how did you meet Terry? How did I meet Terry? Uh, yes. I cannot remember when, but it was a long time ago in some IWS event, I think. Uh, I, oh, yes, in Bulgaria. I think I, we met in an IWS Bulgaria yes. event where she was taking some students a group uh, for the triennial that Selma... Todorova was organizing and uh, it was it was a great event in two cities. Stella Pitti, she's not here, but uh, that's where we met and uh, it was very good. We went, we were together. She had a group of young painters. And one of them, um, I cannot remember, is... Can you see? <laughs> But the echo still is there. Um, to apagar lo que es el altavoz, como arriba, arriba del, de la pantalla, hay una, un icono ahí a la izquierda arriba. Ya lo apagué. Sí, a ver ahora. Ya lo apagué, pero suena el eco. No, ahora no. I don't think now there is an echo. I think that now it's okay. Yeah. ¿Puede no ir bien? Sí. No, si hay eco. No, no hay echo. Oh, no echo, no echo now. Good. But one of the camp, uh, one of the speakers has to be on. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. You're ready to rock and roll, Jerry. Okay, now let's continue. And we will add more color, more and more pigment to this, trying to uh, trying to to see where the shadows in the photo are. I will change the brush, the brush because it is too big. Yes, I love monochromes like that. And uh, answering what uh, Gabriel was saying, yes, we met in in Bulgaria with Selma Todorova. What is the name of that uh, young artist that you brought to? Uh, Moi Medrano. Uh, yes, Moi Medrano, exactly. He got an award, I think. Yeah. There are a lot of watercolor artists in Mexico. A lot. Also in Spain. Yes, yes. 
and tell us about the two watercolor museums. Uh, okay, in Mexico was founded the the first watercolor museum watercolor museum in the world, and later on the second uh, watercolor museum in the world, completely devoted to watercolor, and it was founded by Alfredo Guatirojo in 1952. Uh, the first uh, first as an institute, but then in 1965 as a museum. Uh, and really, it's very important to have um, to have persons interested in watercolor and persons that have uh, the vision of uh, making uh, making it bigger in the world. Brilliant. It's not in Mexico City. Are those in Mexico City? <clears throat> Uh, the, the first one is in Mexico City. The second one is in Toluca City, just one hour uh, by car from Mexico City. And that's it. And as you can see, I am always trying to add more and more color and more pigment to the, to the painting. So because you add more color and less water, it doesn't make any cauliflowers. Is that the reason? Yeah. And also, uh, the paper is getting dry. So when you apply the, the, the brush, you have to be very careful because if the, if the brush has much, much water, more and more water, it is going to have effects that you don't like. Not only the cauliflowers, but also others, lines and, and so on. Uh, I will read a comment that Linda Winman uh, wrote. That is a very talented artist and devoted to sharing watercolor around the world. She's co-hosting second annual International Watercolor Plein Air Festival in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. And you can visit iwssma.org for more information. Oh, yes, that's right. We are going to have this uh, plein air contest in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, near Mexico City, just about uh, four hours or, or so. And it is very important because last year we we had that festival uh, and people joined it from Canada and USA. Uh, it was very funny because there were not there were not many uh, Mexican artists at that time. But right now, after the success of the first event, it is going to, to we are going to have many Mexicans. Right. Harry, is there a special reason that you chose cobalt blue for this piece? I when I when I work monochromatic, I work in three colors: uh, quinacridone, uh, burnt orange, because it looks like sepia, uh, French ultramarine, and cobalt blue. The, the reason is because I like these colors. There is nothing more. And as you can see, I'm making some effects to happen here and here. And after this, we are going to use the hair dryer and to start to work some details to finish this. Uh, Jose, um, Juanjo Herrera Gallegos is saying hello from Facebook. Uh, hi, Herrera. If you don't know this Mexican artist, you should because he, besides being a, a really good artist, it is, it is a very, it is good to be with him because he is very funny. He yes. always has some word for you. He he always offers you mezcal, a Mexican alcoholic uh, uh, drink. Uh, but see, he is really nice and when he is doing demonstrations uh you have to see how he works he makes you laugh 
and learn at the same time. And at the same time you're organizing this festival, he's organizing another in Oaxaca, which is farther from Mexico City, right? Yeah, you have to, go, well, you can go by car, but it takes a long, uh, many hours. It is uh, better to go by, by bus, the, uh, by plane. Yes, Mexico to Oaxaca. Yeah, we say Oaxaca. Oaxaca. And, uh -huh. Uh, you pronounce Oaxaca, you pronounce Oaxaca. Okay. Oaxaca. The X in Spanish in Mexico can be pronounced as, as X, as J, like my name, Lojero, Mexico, and also as sh, like in Uxmal. Uxmal is a, a pre Hispanic site in Mexico. Yes. Because what is the indigenous culture from Mexico? Well, there are many, but the most uh, known in, in the world are the Aztecs and the Mayas. But there are others like the Raramuris from the north of the country. There are also Purépechas in the center of the country. There are Purépechas and Otomis and, and, and others. We have many, many. Many, yeah. Mm -hmm. And many languages are still active, are still alive like the Nahuatl from the Aztecs or the Maya from the Mayans. And people speak them. Yeah. And many of our words comes from those languages. Yeah. So right now I'm going to use the hair dryer. There is a beautiful light in in your sketch. Very, very beautiful. Absolutely. Very nice. Light and contrast. <clears throat> it's add value too. Yes. You could sell this in the Netherlands, uh, Tera. <laughs> um, it, it looks like Del Delph Blue. Yes. On, on the tiles. I thought you were going to call it Rhapsody in Blue. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Jan, in Delft, it's only ceramics, right? It's this blue. Yeah, yes, actually, it, it looks similar like Delft Blue, and it's on many, many tiles, just as in uh, Portugal on all the railway stations, you see the beautiful ceramics, but in our country, it's quite common. So, Such a beautiful light. So here is, um, here's again, as you can see here in the photo, what I have uh, worked on the wet on wet technique uh, are the main contrast values. So the light and the shadows. So now we need to, to get into the detail and to add the middle tones, the middle values to the painting. And that's it. So we will start. I have changed the, the brush and now I'm using a round one. And I will start in this part here. As you can see, you can add Brushing. more movement and you will start having 
the detail of the building. But this price is synthetic for someone who then wants. Yeah, it's called. Terry? Nime? For uh, just the benefit of people that are watching, uh, what is the benefit of painting in monochromatic versus painting in black and white? Well, uh, someone asked me that before we started the, the this streaming, and I was telling them that uh, what I found in monochromatic is that you can identify the, the values, the sun, and the light. And that, uh, as an artist, allows you to, uh, to get a better vision of the scene that you are doing, to get in touch with the values and the middle tones that you can find in a, in a scene, in a painting. After this, because for me, the monochromatic are exercises, after this, you can work with the color. And it will be much easier to work like that because you will know where the middle tones are and you will know where to leave the light in your painting. And as you can see, I'm starting to give shape to the, to the painting because until now, what you have here are only, only spots. Spoken like a true master. Today it is looking great. Oh, thank you. So I won't touch the this these uh, white areas until I know where exactly I have to to darken. Uh, 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 let's let's explain it another way. My main light, the first light I want to emphasize is this one. Is this one here? But if you see in the in the photo, you have other points of light. This one. And this one, uh, mm -hmm. if I leave the same same value for all of them, it will be um, this balance, okay? So I need to know where exactly am I going to leave the whites and where I'm going to add some more color. Let's try to put it in here. Gerardo is saying hello from Mexico. Uh, hello. Thank you for watching this streaming to all the people that are in here. Now, remember, this, this is going to be darker uh, because there is a shadow, of course, but also to give volume to the building that it is, it is above the main one. And also, we will have some things. Um, the the wall, the wall is uh, all scratched. So I will try to give that effect somehow because it, it is uh, it is difficult sometimes to do this, but I will try to do it by adding more pigment and also in this way too. And I will try to erase, to delete the, the sharp line in here. Terry? Mm -hmm. uh, have you tried uh, as an alternative to cobalt? Uh, Which one? Uh, ver Verdata blue. Uh, Angela, ayúdame. Verditer blue, si lo has probado como alternativa. No. It's, it's a combination of cobalt and uh, cerulean blue. Which one is the, the name again? If I can read it properly, Ver, Verdata blue. Okay, I will try it because I, I, I like blues. I really it's like lovely blue. blue. Yeah. I'm going to change my brush and I'm going to use a flat one. 
and always adding more pigment. There are some stairs here, but there are also rocks. Cesar Gordillo, another person from Mexico, is also saying hello. Hello, Cesar. Gracias. And I am also going to work on the dome. Linda Castillo, I don't know if she's from Mexico. Linda Castillo? No, I don't know. Name sounds like Spanish, but I don't know. Also, Lisa is asking, I was wondering what the large bamboo brush is on her palette. I looked through the chat, but didn't see any info. Yes, Bunny replied, it's a Michael Soloyev, right? Michael Soloyev. Yeah. Available. He gave it to me. He gave it to you, yeah. But he sells those brushes on his um, website, watercoloronline.com. That is, I think, it's a goat hair. Yeah. Uh, the other brush that is... This one? This uh, one is synthetic. This is synthetic. I think yeah. the naturals are the two big ones, right? Uh, this one, squirrel. And this one, squirrel too. No, goat. And we will start giving some details. Irán Mía Atreyu, ¿conoces? No. Comment is hermosa in Spanish. So. Maybe Mexican, but uh, or from another Latin American country. As you can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but there's a balcony here. And this kind of details can give you the impression of uh, being um, in the first plane. Okay. How much time do I have? Plenty, 25 minutes. Okay. Listen, Tere, I think it would be good if you uh, could... Um, take the board and bring it closer to the camera for, for just a second. So to see more, okay. better, just lift it up. You, you can make one more demo. Yeah, that's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Yes, we can see yeah, that. Beautiful. That's beautiful. well. Yeah. And you have to add all these details. to create that impression. And as I told you, there is one light here and there are other two here, but the three of them are competing. So I have to decide, as I told you, which one I'm going to kill. But I'm not going to kill them, uh, uh, really to disappear them. I just want them to be a little bit, um, como se dice más tenues? Uh, softer. 
they can be softer. So I started with that one. Uh, we have a question, Tere. Si. Uh, if this were done in colors, would you work in the same way? On the wash and then light to dark? Yeah. Yeah, the same way. But trying to work before on the colors I'm going to use on the paper. Because th this can be, I mean, uh, for me, it is easier to find values in a monochromatic painting. Uh, when you use colors, you have to decide uh, for the color not to compete with the light. But at the same time, uh, the color should maintain the, the brightness uh, and the light of what you are doing. I don't know if I, I was clear, but for me, it's really sometimes difficult to find, to find this uh, with the working first with the color. So I like to do monochromatic either in ink, in pencil, in watercolor like this, and then to work the, the watercolor. Sometimes, well, as all of us, when you are working on site in situ, uh, you need to be fast and you need to use color. So I, I work that as well. But if I'm working in my studio, I really like to to work first the values. Okay. Yeah. When you work a, a, a monochromatic painting like this, do you find that you, you do a, a more abstract painting? Uh, could be, could be, but I, this is the way I work either with color or with monochromatic, with the spots. But the basis of all this is drawing. If I don't have a good drawing, I don't know what am I going to paint or where am I going to put those darks or, or the lines or everything. There are some people that can work without the drawing, but I cannot. And in fact, as a matter of fact, I really like to draw. I love to draw. Would you put a dark blue uh, ink drawing over this? Um, sometimes I add some uh, dark ink, yes. But uh, when I work with ink, I prefer to start with ink, the drawing, without uh, maybe putting or adding some marks in pencil and then start with the, with the ink. And mm -hmm. depending on the behavior of the ink, I will add the water, the values, and the and the color if it is needed. All right. Thank you. Um, but it makes it reminds me of um, also the the same reason Nicolas Lopez gives to paint in his monochromes because to him it's the values that uh, are important. Yeah, very, I would say, very. Okay, now let's start with, um, with the person in there, because there is a person here. So, And someone is asking, are you finding yourself referring to the photo as you're painting? I mean, uh, you use the reference a lot. I think that you uh, if I use the photo as a reference? A lot. I mean, if you refer to the photo continuously. Uh, well, right now, when I draw, I, of course, use the photo or if I am in situ, uh, the place or the scene that I'm watching, because some people have uh, asked me that. Uh, I started drawing, I try to capture the, the scene in my mind, and then I start to put the first uh, layers. But at certain point, I don't see the scene or the picture anymore. 
because right now what I'm watching here is my interpretation of that scene. And sometimes I can add uh, some other, other things to the, to the scene. So right now, if you ask me in this very precise moment, no, I'm not watching the photo or I wouldn't uh, be watching the scene sometimes for references, uh, but not always. And then I started, my mind started to work with this. So what you are looking for is the balance or balance yeah. of visionary values or in details and by the photo, by the painting itself without the reference. Yeah, reference yeah that's right. To, to find a balance, but to find a scene that it is in my mind. Mm. Yes, your inner landscape or whatever. Specifically. And it happens the same, the same if I'm working in, in color. Uh, someone asked me once uh, why you are not watching, uh, we were painting in plein air, what you are not watching the scene anymore. And that's the reason because I have, I need to find the balance, but the balance that uh, it was, it started in my mind. Mm -hmm. More or less, you're working in the painting globally, not by little areas, individual areas. So you you work like globally. See what? Yeah, exactly. But trying that your eye catches the sense of the scene catches that there are some rocks here or there are something in here, even the shape is not exactly uh, as figurative as so sometimes can be. Yes, perfect. And as you can see, I am adding more and more pigment to the place where I want the interest to be to be the, the, the main one, the light. And sometimes what I do is to take this and to put it just in front of me to see if I get the sense of the light. And now what I'm watching, because this is almost done. Uh, Here, please, again. Uh, now, what I'm uh, trying is to see if the whites are balanced or not. If I don't need more shadows in some points of the of the painting, or if I don't need more um, middle values. And what I am seeing right now is that I have a white here that it is bother bothering me because it's competing with this white of the truck. So I'm going, as I tell you before, I'm going to kill it. You're a, you're a, a, a nasty I'm a killer. Murderer, yes, killer. And I am trying to see where I need the attention of the first uh, plane. So this uh, first plane is the Angela? Foreground. Ah, okay. My light is gone. Um, Tere, can we see it from near? Desde cerca podemos verlo. Ah, yes. Bájalo un poquito. Yes. No, no es para acá. Yes, yes. And now this white is very intense. So also it is going to disappear, but I'm going to leave this white from here. And I'm going to add some direction lines. These direction lines has to be with the uh, direction of the street, with the direction of uh, where your site is going to be directed. So uh, there are 
always on the streets, on the surface of the street. I want to show you here uh, places with more shadows like these ones, because this is the road that the cars take or the, the place where a man walks. And these are direction lines that can help you to make your eye to go in there. Well, you know all these things because also you are an architect, so you know very well. Oh. Uh, no, well, no, the direction lines, they didn't show me that in the, in the faculty, but, well, but still, I like to observe everything, everything when you are painting comes from, from the things that you are wa watching and the way your brain processes all the, the scene or the things that you are watching. Everything is work in your brain. And yeah. now, George Politis uh, comment says, beautiful interpretation, excellent manipulation and use of values to bring out this amazing light. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, this thing can be completed. And let's see at the very end what are we doing to do what are we do, going to do with this white but this scene cannot co be completed without all the the wires that you can find on the streets the same thing i i believe in india all the all the yeah all the cables and wires and things yeah yeah ah. well And let's try to do something with this. <laughs> Not to be <laughs> so. Well, uh, how much time do, do I have? 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, Plenty of time. Plenty. Yeah. Loads of time. Terry. Yeah. Um, when you're doing a, a a general painting, what's the average yeah. uh time you like to take to do a painting? Yeah. What's the Angela ayuda me? ¿Cómo tardas en eh, como promedio para hacer una pintura? ¿Cuánto tiempo? Depends on the size. That depends on the size. So this this size, and depending if I am doing a demo or not. Sometimes I can take a lot of time. And uh, when you are painting a uh, plein air, uh, you have to be uh, very fast because the light goes. The light always changes. So uh, that depends. If you are working on your studio and you uh, let the paper to get dry and you start to work with another, well, let's say uh, you take the whole day in two or three paintings. Uh, but if I start a painting and I use something like this uh, with the hair dryer or like that, or maybe two hours maximum with the drawing, and sometimes the drawing takes me more because more. I like uh, the, the, the cityscapes and it takes a lot of time to understand perspective. With, with the drawing, uh, do you draw directly onto the painting first? Yeah. Or do you transfer it once you've drawn it? Because I've always got that phobia of it damaging the paper if I do too much drawing on, on the paper. Yeah, you are right. 
But uh, let me tell you, when I draw, I try to use uh, very uh, soft light uh, lines, but yeah. also uh, practicing is the, the most important thing to have a, a good drawing. So right now, when I draw, almost I don't don't use the, the how you say, the litter borrower. I don't use it because, because my hand is skilled in that. Right. And I think it's it's okay. Uh -huh. Right now for the for the demo it's okay. But now I'm going to ask you, what do you think of the whites that we have there? Which one is the most important? Are you asking us? Yeah, I'm asking you. For, for me, it's the building on the right because it counterposes the dark bit. You mean the bigger one? Yeah, the bigger one. If, if yeah. it Because it, it's a fairly dark area on the right and then you've got that counter to the, yeah. to the left of it. At the, at the very end, what I do is exactly what he's saying is to see if the these whites are not competing one to another. So the first thing I have to do is to darken this area just a little bit, to darken this one just a little bit. And then to add a wash here, very light and not in the whole surface of this building. And it is going to look a little bit different. And also there are some, some values here that are bothering me. And maybe, maybe in the truck, because it's competing with this white, but what am I going to do is to darken a little bit this one to have the light of the truck. And then not to disappear completely the white of, the, of, of this truck, but to add some elements to make it a little bit um, not so uh, important in this. And for the very end, I will add some more darks here and here, here. You've really given us a lot to think about and mm -hmm. practice something really different. I should say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the, the last thing I'm going to do is to add something that it's important. It looks nice. Well, not that important. It looks nice. Tere, can I read you the comments by Buffy? Buffy yeah. Hunt. So much information with just one color. Wonderful teacher and all the wild storytelling too. Currently worrying, wondering about this businessman, where is he going? What is he carrying? And on and on. Love and art, love art that brings us in like that. Thank you, Tere. Gracias, thank you. Maybe at this point I will add something here. Just to know, you know, something important is that on the roofs, always is happening something. Uh, you don't know what. You don't know what is there, but you see things. And the more you add some things to the top of the roofs, you will give more, um, more a movement to, to your painting. And that's it. And now, signature, and that's all. Terry. Yeah? Uh, a bit controversial, this, but uh, would you reintroduce white with gouache or, or white watercolour if, if it needed it in certain areas? Yes, if needed, yes. 
because sometimes you can lose your wife. But when you are working in this kind of exercises in monochromatic, it is very difficult for you to lose the white because you leave it from the very beginning. When you start to, to do this, I'm going to put it a little bit closer. If you remember, I started to you, add color uh, the, to those areas that needed to be in shadow. And I leave the middle values for the second stage. But at the very beginning, what I left always is the light. And that's it. That was wonderful demo. Wonderful. Oh, Mary, could you pull the tape off? Exactly. That was going to us the same thing. <laughs> what? I didn't hear. Sorry. Take so the tape. I love that the tape matches the painting. <laughs> but what were you asking? I didn't hear. Sorry, because I was moving. Quitar la cinta. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Let me see because. Porque se ve mucho mejor la pintura. Eso. Yes, that's it. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. Mm. Shines more, huh? Wow, what a light. Is it artist tape, that, Terry? Yeah, artist oh. tape. Artist tape. Y es tinta de artista. Ah, no. No, no, no. It's no. a tape of uh, architect for the, when you are covering or protecting protecting the, the windows, uh, all the aluminum things around the windows oh. and you have to paint. So you, you decorated can, tape. Yeah, you, 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 you can find many things in the, to protect or to use tapes in the architectural construction area. Masking tape. So this is a painting. That's Beautiful. Thank you. Very nice. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. That is truly stunning. That's fun. Something, something really different. Excellent <laughs> excellent demonstration. Thank you. Thank Muy you. Bueno. Thank you to you all for being here with me and to hear all the things I have to say because you know there are artists that when they are painting they don't like to talk, but I like to talk. And I like to explain and I like to say the, the things that I am doing because uh, uh, my brain can process uh, what I'm doing and what I'm saying and what I'm painting. Because your right side and your left side are connected very well. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, you did a brilliant job. Thank you. Do you have like a, an Instagram or website um, just because I haven't seen your art before, but it's beautiful. Yes, all my, in my, my social media, you can find me in Facebook, in my uh, website and Instagram as Tere Lojero, T-E-R-E-L-O-J-E-R-O, -E -E Lojero. Thank you. Gracias. Mm -hmm. Okay, John, you tell me what's next. Oh, thank you. That was fantastic. So much in, in less than an hour. Mm -hmm. it, it was less than an hour or it was an hour sharp? It's, it's never a full hour, so you did <laughs> phenomenal. Great artwork okay. explaining everything you're doing. That's, it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Tere. No, thank you. Thank you everybody <laughs> for watching. Thank you for joining. You. And at the at the front of the video is all the information from Terry, so you can see her website, except for all the information is on the front side of the of the presentation. Bye, Terry. Bye bye. Thank you bye, so much, Terry. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye.